So at the instant of theta is equal to 45 degrees, the athlete is running with a constant speed of 2 meters per second. Determine the angular velocity at which the camera must turn in order to follow the motion. So they want theta dot, that instantaneous rate of change of theta with time, really the angular speed. And since I know they want that, I definitely know this is going to be a polar coordinate situation. So here's my runner, and I know that he is running to the left. And at this instant, we know his speed, well, not only at this instant, we know that he has a constant speed of 2 meters per second. So I have my angle at this instant, 45 degrees. Of course, I have the distance from my tracking point, my origin, to my runner, that R. So let me set up my coordinate system here. My transverse, that theta direction, is going to be here. And my radial direction is, of course, outwards in the direction of increasing r. So because I'm dealing with velocity, I'm going to remember my velocity expression in terms of these polar quantities. I can split up the true velocity of my object into a transverse component and a radial component. And let me just draw that a little bigger. So, this vector expression here, the statement that these two components do that tip-to-tail vector adding to get my true velocity, this vector statement here is a, a nice right triangle for us. These component statements here tend to, tend to do that. So we have access to Pythagorean theorem, we can use sine, cosine, and tangent, we can use all that right triangle stuff to help us figure out these different lengths. So we're definitely going to want to leverage that. And of course, I'll need some angle here to unlock this right triangle. So if we do geometry here, I'll start with this 45. And I'll realize that this angle right here is also our 45. Got a horizontal line and this R slant down there. Well, same thing up here. Here's our horizontal line, and here's that R slant just continued on that R axis. So also 45 there. Well, this is 90 degrees. So therefore, this also has to be 45 degrees to make this entire thing 180. So we want this right here, the angle of angular velocity. And this is our adjacent side of this right triangle. So if I, so if I set up a cosine, the cosine of that 45 degrees will equal the adjacent, which is our transverse component velocity, over 2, the hypotenuse, the true magnitude of the velocity, I can figure that out. 1.41. Now this is the, this is equal to this entire number here. So as long as I know the r at this instant, I can figure out that angular velocity. And with the equation they give us here, that um, that produces for us the the changing r value of this runner, we can figure that out. So if I plug in 45 degrees in here, the r that comes out is 42.4 meters. So taking this, plug it in here, we learn that our angular speed is 0 0.0 
3323. And this is in radians per second. I probably should have mentioned that in the intro video to Polar, but all of these angles here, just the way that math is hardwired and designed, all of these angles are in radians. And that right here is our answer. So, this is only actually one way to do the problem by setting up the power of this vector expression here. Basically just drawing out this equation, this vector equation, and recognizing that it's a right triangle and leveraging that. Definitely a very useful trick if you can use it. Sometimes you don't. So let's go through the second way of doing the problem. So let's use this equation right here. We want theta dot, but we also have r dot in the mix here. So maybe we want to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So if we, if we do this, we'll end up with the change of our radius with time. On the right hand side, that 30 is a constant, so we can take this out of our derivative expression. Now, is this a constant? No. Theta will definitely be changing as time goes on. And you always want to visualize these problems. As our runner keeps running, our r value will shift, and of course our theta will get bigger as well. So theta definitely changes with time. And therefore, I have to use the chain rule. I have to pretend, really, that there is this invisible equation, maybe it's theta is equal to t squared, inside of that theta. Some equation that tells me exactly how theta changes with time. So in a sense, I have an outer equation, the cosecant, and the inner equation here is that mystery theta as a function of time. So of course I got to do the derivative of the outer and the derivative of cosecant is going to be negative cosecant cotangent of theta times the derivative of this equation. Well again we don't know what that equation is so therefore we don't know what its derivative is so I'll just put the symbol that stands for its derivative, the derivative of whatever that equation is. And of course we have 30 and our r dot over here. So here's our plan here. Remember in all cases, regardless of the angle is 45 or 30 or whatever, we use Pythagorean theorem on these components to figure out the magnitude of my velocity. So if I just substitute what these components really are here, I'm going to know what r is. I know that my true speed here is 2, so my only unknowns are going to be theta dot and r dot. Well right here I have theta dot really in terms of r dot. I mean, I, I can figure out my angle, well angle is 45 so that's no problem. So I can put this whole equation in for this and then my only unknown is going to be this theta dot, d theta over dt. That's how we're going to proceed here. So one more time, this is just my radial component of velocity whose magnitude is r dot and we figured out that r dot is this whole equation over here. I have no idea why it's in yellow. And I've just rearranged a couple of terms. I just put the theta dot on the left and uh, put the negative over here. Just a couple of housekeeping tasks. And we also have the transverse, that theta component velocity, and here it is right here. Okay, so we just gotta run with this math. Let's figure out r. Well, we can figure out r the same way as last time. 
using this equation or here's this 30 we may as well make use of it here's this length of 30 right here so we can use sine here the sine of this angle 45 will equal the opposite of 30 divided by the hypotenuse the r and we'll find that r is equal to that same 42.42 really got rounded up 0.43 meters so that will go here of course our angle is 45 degrees and you may be wondering wait why are you plugging in degrees here well as long as your calculator is in the right mode like my calculator is in degree mode this cosine or cosecant and cotangent will uh, pump out the right ratio for us as long as your calculator is in the right mode so let me do negative 30 times cosecant 45 cotangent 45 let me algebra that funny enough that's going to be a negative 42.43 I plug in my R right in here as well. So I'll square both sides to get rid of the radical. Of course we have two of these exact same terms here, so it's really two times this group. And uh, even though we have a negative here, when I uh, square this whole thing, the negative goes away. So really I can just delete this negative here. I can divide both sides by 2. I can actually uh, apply the squared here. So I'll square both the 42 and the theta dot. And I'll divide both sides of the equation by this 1800. And then I can finally take the square root of both sides. And I'll get that same point zero three 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 radians per second. So, again, two ways. One in which we really focused on the angle of this right triangle and exploited it. We used sine, cosine, and tangent on the actual vector summation expression here and used that. And then there was the second approach where we didn't do, uh, we didn't really exploit this 45 degree up here. We mainly used the uh, the calculus, the derivative of this, and the uh, the Pythagorean theorem for our vector expression here. So, two different techniques to keep on your radar. Hope everything here made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments.